words. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to hear from Earl McWilliam so that we can hear some specifics about Killingly, and then we're going to hear from a young person, and uh, then we'll have some more speakers. Okay. More questions? Uh, my name is Earl McWilliams and I got a story for you. My wife Pam and I have been foot soldiers in two hard fought battles against frack gas power plants. We, we used to live in Boroughville, Rhode Island, where after a four year struggle, we and thousands of our fellow Rhode Islanders defeated Invenergy's attempts to build a 500 megawatt frack gas monster in a pristine part of our town. Now, now we are engaged in an epic struggle against another monster 645 megawatt frack gas power plant that NTE wants to build a half mile from our new home in Killingly, Connecticut. And now, after another four year struggle, I think that we are about to beat them too. Just as in Rhode Island, it's the same corporate arrogance and ignorance and the hard work of folks like you and us that is about to send these greedy bastards packing. <laughs> in, in Rhode Island, Invenergy thought that it could come in and force the good people of Boroughville to open a poisoned well for the water that they needed, a well that the courts had ordered closed forever. They failed in that and then spent three fruitless years going around the state begging for water, but no city or town in the state would help them. I submit to you that it is NTE's corporate arrogance and ignorance and four years of hard work by people like you and us that has left the Killingly Energy Center's future hanging by a thread. N NTE arrogantly thought that they could get away with building a plant with a smokestack a hundred feet shorter than what EPA requires and it would severely pollute not just Killingly but all the surrounding towns with the nastiest, heaviest pollutants which would never reach high enough into the atmosphere to be dispersed. NTE ignorantly won their bid from last year's ISO auction with a bid so ridiculously low that experts have made clear the plant will never make back their $750 million investment. And with Commissioner Dykes predicting that the plant will run as seldom as possible and the governor now looking for ways to stop it, NTE can't find the investors willing to take the risk. Yeah. So, so now in their arrogance, this is a detail you want to hear, in their arrogance, NTE wants the Killingly Town Council to let them come in early to destroy the 23 acres of pristine woodlands where they want to build this monster. No! Early, before they have the financing, early, before they've cleared the legal hurdles that we local residents and the Sierra Club have thrown in their way. Why do they have to come in early? The dirty little secret is that there is an endangered species of bat that by May 1st begins nesting in the 100 foot pines that NTE has to take out to build the plant. NTE, if, if, if NTE can't get in there before May 1st, then their destruction construction can't begin until September Aww. when the nesting season is over for the little darlings. Uh, our mantra, our mantra in Rhode Island was to delay them is to defeat them. And that's what's working here. Stand with us. And NTE will face the same fate that Invenergy faced in Rhode Island. Corporate power is helpless in the face of people organized and committed. Thank you for taking a stand against corporate greed and for a greener, healthier Connecticut and world.
So now we're going to hear from another young person, and uh, we have enough time for all our speakers because, interestingly, we note that the legislators didn't come out here to our rally today, although they did express an interest in that. And before I introduce our next speaker, I'm just going to tell you that we heard some of our friends went and listened to Governor Lamont's talk, and Governor Lamont is really focused on doing a lot of really good things for our state and we support so very many of those initiatives. However, the climate crisis is really, really low on his list of priorities. In fact, it's possible that it was one of the last remarks that he just made when he was addressing the legislature right now. Now, of course, the climate crisis is our the greatest existential threat of our lifetimes and of your children and grandchildren's lifetimes. So we need to keep the pressure on. He needs to move that level of priority up to the top of his list. So let's hear from Kelly O'Brien of People for the Planet Committee. Let's go, Kel. Hello, everybody. I'm Kelly O'Brien. I'm from Windsor, Connecticut. here today standing up for justice. The climate crisis today affects us all, but more so affects communities of color and low-income communities, plus those who may not know or care to know about it, and those whose voices are not often heard. This isn't just about clean air, land, and water, although that should matter to everyone. This is also about the fact that toxic, faci toxic facilities are placed around communities of color, just like the incinerator that burns our trash right here in Hartford, polluting the air with methane, lead, dioxin, and carbon dioxide, which can leak into the air, groundwater, and rivers and adds to global warming. Mm. Air pollutions cause asthma, cancer, and other health problems, especially to those who live around these facilities. Speaking of trash, we as people must reduce our amount of waste dramatically, which means being mindful of what and how much we are throwing away what we can compost, and what we can recycle. <clears throat> right. We need education on how to compost and recycle correctly, along with more bins. <laughs> and we do not need a new gas plant. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yes, natural gas produces about half the amount of CO2 than coal, but gas plants and getting the gas to the power plants where it's mined both produce a lot of methane and carbon dioxide. We can simply use renewable energy from wind turbines, solar panels, and hydropower, which produce no carbon dioxide or methane. We as people are ready for real change, and this can only happen if we all take responsibility to do our part and to also make sure legislators write and vote for bills that lay out the change we wish to see. And the change needs to happen now, because now is the only time that we have. Let's do what makes sense for everybody. Let's care about those being affected the most and let's care about the world as a whole. Let's look at the bigger picture and instead of trying to figure out how to make the most money, let's look at how we can help the most people and how to save our planet before it's too late. Peace, love, healthiness, and happiness. We can only be healthy with clean air, water, and fresh food. Which, by the way, animal agriculture causes deforestation, which also adds to climate change. I stand with my brothers and sisters, friends and strangers alike, to recite a spoken word. I truly believe we are on the right path, as long as our voices are matched with action. We need Governor Lamont and our legislators to commit to 100% renewable energy, not just a fraction. We absolutely don't need a new gas plant in Killingly, so let's retract that. Yes. Clean okay. energy, climate change education, and divestment from fossil fuels. Yes. We can contract that. Energy from wind, solar, and hydro is the only way to go. Let's make a pact to ourselves that we will conserve energy, get educated, vote, carpool, and use less gas. Let's recycle, reuse, and reduce our trash. Let's learn how to compost, host informational events, and most of all, let's care about our environment, people, animals, land, air, water, and coasts. Care so much that you take your concerns to the people in power and make sure the people in power actually sign and vote for bills that will sustain our hours. Fighting for our health and wellness, we can't be invisible and we can't be cowards. 
we also can't just point the finger because the change starts from within. And real change occurs in unity because together we win. Let's address bills that will conserve clean air, clean water, and reliable transportation, such as the Blue Plan, Bottle Bill, and Climate Change Education, banning pesticides, finding alternatives to plastic, and land conservation, with our end goal being justice and to sustain our United Nations. April 28th, we absolutely must vote for a president who cares about the environment and us. My hope is with Bernie Sanders, who's the only one I trust. We must be looking towards, we must be looking towards free health care and education for all, taking money from our military funds because peace is the call. No racist bigotry or walls because we all share this land and we're all connected so if one group falls, we all fall. We need compassionate people who embrace every race and protect us from greed and disgrace. We are the change that we need. Let's just make sure we speak to our legislators and each other face to face. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. And I especially want to acknowledge, again, all the young people and just the amazing work and the inspiring work that the youth are doing today. Um, I want to thank all of you so much for that. Um, so now we are going to hear from Representative Mike Winkler. Thank you, Representative Winkler. All right. So many times we get called out here for an issue that we know that our chances of success are slim in that year. And, uh, but, you know, we fight the good fight. This is not one of those times. The, there is not widespread statewide support for the Killing Me Plan. There's a company support and there's a local support, but in this building, and I've talked to members of the Energy and Technology Committee that I'm on, there is openness to the idea of doing what we can to make sure that plant never goes in operation. That's right! And if you listen to Ms. Dykes and the, uh, and Deep, they don't seem to be standing behind this plant solidly. They seem to be wandering off. <laughs> and uh, I do not see any reason why, with your support, we couldn't kill this plant this yeah. session. Kill the plant! 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 Kill the plant. Okay. <laughs> But what does that mean you have to do? That means you have to contact everybody in the green movement. You, can, you have to tell them to call their legislator. Then you have to call them back and say, did you call? And if they didn't, you tell them you're gonna be calling them back again. You have to make sure everybody calls. When they call, they should all ask for a meeting with their legislator. Now, a lot of them won't get them. But if a legislator doesn't care, and a significant number of them don't, they may say, I can't give you a meeting, but don't worry, I'll, I'll vote your way on the issue. In which case, they've done their job, okay? So you gotta get those people who don't care, you've already got the people who do care, and I honestly believe that's a majority this time around. Good luck, but you gotta call them and you gotta ask for the personal meeting. What great remarks, how helpful is that? And as a lot of you heard me say over at Deep, we're here because we have hope. We know that there are solutions to these problems. We already know what the answers are. Governor Lamont wants to make Killingly go away. Deep needs to refuse the permits. We already know that this problem can be solved, that Deep can stop the convert the state subsidized conversions to frack methane for residential use, we can solve the problem. The science tells us that if we stop extracting and burning fossil fuel basically now, immediately, and we stop deforestation, we can keep global heating to 1.5 degrees C or less. There is reason for hope. Yes. We should be doing everything and we should do it right now. And like Representative Winkler said, 
We just need to get the people that either don't care or don't understand on board and fighting with us together to bring change here in Hartford. And that's what's going to happen. Over there at Deep, yeah. we're going to get them to refuse the permits for all these frack gas projects. And here the governor and the legislature are going to create a methane moratorium. Because this madness must stop. Yeah. 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 So now, without further ado, I am going to introduce who is probably going to be the last speaker unless somebody else shows up. Um, so I give you, from 350 Connecticut, Ben Martin. Ben Martin. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Um, I, I just want to thank you all for coming and uh, I want to thank Martha for this great shirt. Although I have to take off my coat and freeze to wear it. So, um, so, uh, so let's just say, Frack no, gas has got to go. Frack, Frack no, no, gas has got to go. Frack 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 no, gas has got to go. A lot of people said the things that I usually say, so I won't be too long, but I just want to say that like, it's great that you're out here, it's great that we have legislators out here. Um, what's frustrating is that we go to DEEP and we go to their hearings and we say, we don't want any more frack gas because it's killing the climate, and when your house is burning, you don't just give up and walk away and let it burn, you fight the fire. And they say, well, it's a legislative thing and the legislators have to tell us. And then I go to the legislators and say, you have to stop this plan. And they say, well, that's up to deep in the Connecticut Siting Council. So everyone has to take action here. We need every part of the government to say that gas is not a solution because it's not. Fossil fuels are not a solution. It's a problem. And it's a problem, exactly. And we have to, uh, we have to work from the basis of these corporations and these gas companies have to prove that it's worth it, not we have to prove that it's not. Yeah. Because because they have a bad history of doing the right thing. Like, all, every single oil and gas plant has violated environmental laws, has environmental safety laws, and has killed people. And I'm not talking about the people that die from asthma and, and uh, pollution every day because that's millions of us that happen. I'm talking about the people who work for gas companies. Yeah. They die every single day in this world. And then we have the activists that are killed so these oil companies can make money. People, the oil and gas industry is an industry of death. And we don't need that anymore. Right. We have gone past the point where we have to burn things for energy. Yeah. We have the technology to do this. We don't need this anymore. Governor Ned Lamont needs to recognize that. Katie Dykes needs to recognize that. Every single legislator in this building has to recognize that. And we need to work from the assumption that fossil fuels are a bad idea and you have to prove to us why it's not. Yeah. 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 So thank you all for coming today. Um, keep it up, keep the activism up. I believe we will stop this plant, but we need to stop more than this plant. We need to stop, we need to stop ESPN. We need to stop Yukon. We need to stop Killingly. But more than that, we have to have a moratorium and a ban on new fossil fuel infrastructure. Because we cannot consider keep doing this whack-a-mole thing where these plants come up and we knock them down because we are strong. We need, we need a government that knows what's right and does it. So we need, we need a transportation system that values people, not cars. We need a transportation system. Uh, we, I'll just say that the governor put out this transportation system and when we asked what the climate effect was, they were like, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. So we need a government that works from the, from the assumption that the climate is an emergency yes. and we need to deal with it now and we will reap the benefits for years to come. So thank you all for coming today.
and keep fighting. So, like I said, we're being flexible, and we have two more speakers, and then I'll wrap things up at the end. So we're going to hear from Senator Julie Kushner, and then we'll hear from May Flexer. Yeah. Just to let you know, I have a hashtag. Do you want my coat? No, no. <laughs> my hashtag is not related. You, you get it? Julie Kushner? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you didn't get that. So, so I am the senator from the 24th district, and that is Sherman, New Fairfield, Danbury, and part of Bethel. And you probably know that New York is constructing a power plant called Cricket Valley Power Plant, and that is only eight miles from Sherman, Connecticut. The people who live in the northwest corner of Connecticut are extremely concerned about the kind of pollution that they will face from that plant going online. So last year we did pass a bill and it was signed into law that they will begin to do air quality monitoring now so that we have a baseline to compare so we know the impact of this power plant on the people of Sherman and the surrounding towns. So, I just want to say that we're happy that you're here. There are a lot of people in my district that support what you're doing today. And I know that we need to put the brakes on fossil fuels. We can't do, we can't move quick enough to do that. So I was happy to be here and represent my district and introduce my dear friend and a wonderful state senator, May Flexer. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so grateful that all of you are here today and that you've been here so continuously in this fight. Um, I have been fighting the, the proposed Killingly Power Plan for almost five years. And I am so grateful to all of you for being a partner in that fight. Um, we all know for so many reasons why this proposed power plant is not needed and why it's the wrong thing, not only for our corner of the state, but for the state of Connecticut as a whole. Right. Yeah. Yes. And I'm grateful that Senator Kushner came here today. Uh, Senator Kushner, along with our great colleague, Senator Christine Cohen, who's the chair of the Environment Committee, passed that initiative last year to protect her community. And so at the very least, we should be fighting for those same kind of tests to be taking place in Northeastern yeah. Connecticut. Yeah. As you all know, yeah. the nearest testing facility is in East Hartford. Yes. That is a long way from Killingly. Yeah. And so, um, I think that's a minimal demand, but I still think there's hope to stop this power plant. And yes. what you are doing, being here at this Capitol so consistently, is making a difference. Governor Lamont is hearing us. I know the commissioner of the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection doesn't really seem to think this is such a great idea. We just have to keep the pressure on so that maybe they can use one of their bureaucratic tools to stop this power plant yeah. from being built. Yeah. This does not line up with our plans for the state of Connecticut to move away from fossil fuels, something we need to do, I think, in a much more rapid way than we're currently doing. Yeah. This, yes. Yeah. Yes. And there's just no reason for this facility to move <laughs> forward. And so I'm hopeful because of all of your great efforts, our voices will be heard. Not only the voices from Northeastern Connecticut, but the voices of people who know what's right for our environment from all over the state. So thank you so much for being here this afternoon. And I'm hopeful that we're gonna win the day and stop the Killingly Power Plant. Right. Good. Go with your wife. That's good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Flexer and Senator Kushner. More, more optimistic words from politicians, right? So we, we believe that, and we are going to do what they say. And this pressure is not going to stop. A um, couple of quick statements I'm going to make, and, and we're going to actually wrap it up. I want to make sure that everybody remembers the Struggle.org is videotaping us today, and everybody, please support and look at the. TheStruggle.org. I want to remind everyone, February 10th, Youth Climate Lobby Day, Youth Lobby Day, and make Three sure... Shirts. 11 <laughs> o'clock, Old Judiciary Room. Okay, 11 o'clock, February 10th, Old Judiciary Room. Thank you, Alex. Youth Lobby Day. We really have to support the youth. They are yep. going to make this movement work. Yep. Uh, we perhaps are going to have one last speaker. Um, so, which is very going to be very fun. 
Uh, bonjour. Um, and the, so I'm going to say one thing before we hear from our favorite politician of all time. Um, um, Representative Michel. So I started out by talking about social justice and it's really obvious to everyone here right now that environmentalism and social justice are the same thing. Means and ends are the same. We can't live in a socially unjust world where teenage black boys are extrajudicially executed um, and then think that we can shut down power plants and we're going to have a great, pretty, happy, fine world, right? That's not going to happen. We have to address social justice. It is the same cause as the cause all of us have been fighting for. And I just want to say, Kira Ortaleva was going to speak today, and she unfortunately wasn't able to, and she sent me her remarks, which I left over at Deep. So what I want to say is in honor of Kira's broken heart, um, Mubarak Suleimani was a teenager um, with diagnosed mental illness um, who was troubled. He committed a crime. The police were ordered to stop chasing him because the police know that car chases cause horrible things to happen, horrible violence and horrible destruction. So that's why they're not supposed to chase cars. But so then they did. And this young man was shot so many times. He was ill. He is a child who was ill. And this is the kind of thing that happens um, in Connecticut when black boys are mentally ill or even if they're not mentally ill. Um, they are at risk out in our streets. So this is the same cause as our cause, right? We can't clean up the world when youth who are ill are being slaughtered. Um, and so that's uh, what I want to say. We're remembering Mubarak. May he rest in power. And now to jump back to someone who has been called the Rainbow Farter, let us welcome one of our really great heroes, is Rep. David Michel. Thank you. Martha is a hero for the state. I, yeah. I can't even trace back when my first emails came from Martha in my email inbox and was like, wow, she makes me look passive. <laughs> so I had to up my game. And there were not only Martha, there were a couple of heroes in the state, environmental heroes. All I'm here to say, and it's very brief, is we can't represent you without hearing your voice. So it's very important to come here, to come to the legislature, to come and speak at public hearings, and to stand up and be activists also in there. There are people standing every day for their causes. If you have time to do that, if you can, then you are one additional voice, one additional face. And then to, look, to, to talk about social justice, social justice expands to other living beings yes. and other living being, beings and biodiversity is directly linked to climate change and to protecting our planet. So we need to listen more to the youth as legislators, we need to act. This is what the youth is asking for, action. And action speaks louder than words. So we need to keep the pressure on the governor's office, on the deep, to protect our biodiversity. I'm trying to work on a bill, I'm not sure because it's a short session that it will go forward, but it would be a Keystone and Apex Species uh, Protection Act. Why? We're in business with federal waters for energy. That means we have a word as to what happens in those waters. We have a word as to what happens in our forests in Connecticut. Hunting bears is not a solution. Black bears are the most benign animals. They are non-aggressive. And I've actually seen them in the wild a couple of times. Uh, and I've, I've, a mother bear brought a cub then disappeared. And we're like, what's happening? Are we becoming mamas? <laughs> and, and what happened? She came back with two other cubs. <laughs> I was becoming one with a tree. I was like, I, I, I do hug trees. But this time I was not thinking of hugging. I was just like observing. I was like trying to be silent. And uh, she trusted us. She trusted us. That mother bear trusted us with her cubs. So that says a lot. There was no, uh, no way, no, nothing to attract the bear to come here. This was in the natural environment, deep in the forest. So protecting our keystone and apex species is protecting our soil, protecting our water. We need them. So th there's a lot of bills coming out for animal rights. Don't forget, it's directly linked to biodiversity. We have to consider protecting all living beings. 
uh, they enable us to stay. And I've talked about the whales and the bees. Uh, one is gigantic, one is tiny, and they're both equally important for our survival. So if we don't protect them from noise, for example, the whales or, or other kinds of pollution with offshore wind, because a lot of people think offshore wind is great. It is great as long as we do it the correct way. And if we don't make it noisy, we actually could create 30 times the amount of jobs. So again, uh, be a voice, be a strong voice, okay, for the environment, be a strong voice for the other living beings because they're part of our environment and we depend on them as well. Thank you, that's it. Thank you. That was the perfect uh, closing remarks because talk about intersectionality, right? Intersectionality including whales and bees, the ultimate intersectionality. Um, so I thank you all so much. I love you people and I know that you appreciate how whales actually are meaningful for stopping frack gas power plants, right? I know you guys get it. And then the final thing that we're going to hear about, because we are remembering Mubarak today, um, Stan is going to give us a notice about the uh, a rally in, to honor Mubarak Suleimani. And I will see you guys at our next protest. Thank you. Thank you. I live in the town where Mubarak was killed. The most outrageous thing was when he got off the highway, exit 43, five police cars surrounded him within 10 seconds. He had nowhere to go. 30 seconds later, he was dead. There'll be a rally at, starting at that exit 43 in West Haven on Friday the 21st of this month at 4.30. And we'll march to the police station and raise some noise because the town, the fathers are not saying anything about it. So keep that in mind Friday the 20... What did I say? Friday the 20... Friday, February 21st, 4.30. Keep looking at pepeace.org. Pepeace.org for details. Thank you. Thank you.